Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on disorders of white blood cells. I am Desmond from Newton TV and I'm excited to guide you through this important topic. We'll be covering the basics of WBCs, their abnormalities and related neoplasms. White blood cells or leukocytes are our body's defense force against infection. As you can see in the diagram, they are produced in the bone marrow within both the spongy and compact bone. They then circulate throughout the body, ready to respond to any threat. Our immune system has two main branches, innate and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is our first line of defense, involving cells like neutrophils and macrophages, and it triggers inflammation. Adaptive immunity, on the other hand, is specific and acquired, relying on B and T lymphocytes to create memory cells for long-term protection. Let's dive into the WBC basics. We can broadly categorize them into three major groups, monocytes, lymphocytes, and granulocytes. Each of these groups has unique functions and subcategories that we'll explore further. Hematopoiesis is the fascinating process of blood cell formation. It all starts with myeloid and lymphatic stem cells. These stem cells then differentiate into various blood cell types, including erythrocytes, megakaryocytes, and the different types of white blood cells. To reiterate, hematopoiesis begins with pluripotent stem cells, which give rise to all our blood cells, WBCs, RBCs, and platelets. It's also important to remember the term blast cells, which refers to immature precursor cells in this developmental process. The lymphatic system plays a crucial role in our immune response. It's a network of vessels and tissues that transport lymph, a fluid containing infection-fighting white blood cells, throughout the body. Key components include lymph nodes, the spleen, and the thymus gland. A granulocyte as the name suggests, lack prominent granules in their cytoplasm. This group includes monocytes, which mature into macrophages and dendritic cells, and lymphocytes, which are responsible for long-term immunity through T and B cells. Phagocytosis is a critical process where cells, like macrophages, engulf and destroy foreign particles, such as bacteria. The macrophage moves out of the capillary, captures the antigen, and uses lysosomal enzymes to digest it, effectively neutralizing the threat. Granulocytes, in contrast to agranulocytes, contain granules filled with chemicals in their cytoplasm. This group includes neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, each with specialized roles in fighting infection and inflammation. Neutrophils, for example, are the first responders to infection. Now let's discuss some WBC count abnormalities. Leukocytosis refers to an elevated WBC count, while leukopenia indicates a decreased count. A leukemoid reaction is a very high WBC count due to a cause other than leukemia. Neutrophilia, an elevated neutrophil count, is the most common WBC abnormality in leukocytosis often seen in response to bacterial infections. Neutropenia, a decreased neutrophil count, compromises the immune response and can be caused by medications like chemotherapy. It's important to remember that all WBC types can present with abnormal numbers. We can see monocytopenia, eosinophilia, and basopenia. Also, lymphocyte values vary with age, with T-cell numbers decreasing as we get older. Myelodysplastic syndrome, or MDEs, is a disorder of bone marrow stem cells that can affect one or all blood cell types. It's more common in older adults and can be caused by environmental exposures. Patients may present with anemia, increased bruising, or increased infections. Hematologic neoplasms encompass conditions like leukemia and lymphoma. Leukemia involves the proliferation of blood cells, while lymphoma involves the proliferation of lymphocytes in lymphoid tissue. Risk factors include anything that damages DNA and certain viral infections. 
Leukemias and lymphomas share a similar pathophysiology. Non-functional cancerous WBCs proliferate, overwhelming the bone marrow and suppressing the development of other blood cells. This can lead to anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, bone pain, enlarged lymph nodes, and splenomegaly. Diagnosing hematologic neoplasms requires a combination of methods. These include a CBC with differential bone marrow aspiration, FISH, PCR, and flow cytometry. Flow cytometry, as illustrated here, uses lasers and detectors to analyze cell characteristics. Treatment options for hematologic neoplasms are diverse. They include chemotherapy, monoclonal antibodies, radiation, stem cell transplants, and CAR T-cell cancer immunotherapy, each with its own mechanism of action and potential benefits. Treatment for hematologic neoplasms can also lead to complications. Tumor lysis syndrome, differentiation syndrome, and cytokine release syndrome are all potential risks that require careful monitoring and management. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, or AL, is an aggressive leukemia more common in children. The faster the response to treatment, the better the prognosis. All involves immature T or B cells and a bone marrow lymphoblast count of greater than 20%. Signs and symptoms of all can be nonspecific, but may include anemia, increased bleeding, lymph node enlargement, and bone pain. Treatment options include chemotherapy, bone marrow transplant, and CAR T therapy. Follow-up maintenance is crucial to prevent relapse. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, is the most common leukemia type in the U.S., typically affecting older adults. Its etiology includes agents that can disrupt DNA. ZAP70 is a prognostic marker with positive indicating worse prognosis. CLL is a B-cell malignancy where cells express the proto-oncogene BCL2 leading to constant proliferation. Diagnosis involves lymphocytosis and bone marrow biopsy showing smudge cells. Treatment depends on the stage of cancer. Richter's transformation where CLL changes to an aggressive lymphoma is a potential complication. Acute myelogenous leukemia, or AML, involves the proliferation of undifferentiated myeloid cells. These myeloid blasts can invade other tissues. The risk of AML increases with previous chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Diagnosing AML involves a CBC and genetic translocation analysis. Typical signs and symptoms of leukemia will be present. Treatment includes chemotherapy and bone marrow transplant, often involving remission induction and consolidation stages. Chronic myelogenous leukemia, or CML, involves the overproduction of mature myeloid cells. Most adults with CML have the Philadelphia chromosome. The clinical course has three phases, chronic, accelerated, and blast crisis. Usual symptoms of leukemia, such as anemia, increased infection, and increased bleeding, are present in CML. Diagnosis involves CBC and PCR. Treatment options include tyrosine kinase inhibitors and bone marrow transplant. Lymphomas are broadly classified into Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma is more common in young adults and involves B cells with Reed-Sternberg cells. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is more common in older individuals and involves B or T cells or NK cells. Lymphoma staging considers size, spread, microscopic appearance, and genetic markers. Bulky and non-bulky tumors have different prognoses with non-bulky tumors generally having a better outcome. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma affects B, T, or NK cells and is more common in middle-aged or older adults. Chromosomal translocations are often involved. An enlarged, painless lymph node is often the first sign. Treatment includes chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Hodgkin's lymphoma is most common in young adults and children over 10 years of age. The cause is unknown, but EBV may play a role. 
Diagnosis relies on identifying Reed Sternberg cells, malignant B cells with two nuclei, in a lymph node biopsy. Treatment involves combination chemotherapy, radiation, and immunotherapy. Multiple myeloma affects plasma B cells, leading to the production of abnormal immunoglobulins. Genetic and chromosomal abnormalities are common. Diagnosis involves finding 10% or more plasma cells in the bone marrow. Bone pain and an increased risk of infection are also characteristic. Renal disease is a common manifestation of multiple myeloma and indicates a poor prognosis. Staging is based on the revised international staging system. Treatment involves chemotherapy followed by autologous stem cell transplant, but is usually deferred in asymptomatic patients. Subscribe, like, and share for more videos.